Princess Zelda as she appears in Twilight Princess will be the coolest iteration forever, or until they make a playable Zelda. That's how I feel at least, and it doesn't help that she has fundamentally shaped me as a person since the moment I saw her as a child. Hi, I'm Azriel. You can find me most other places as Malakalico, and I'll be discussing Princess Zelda, her depiction in Twilight Princess, and how it stands out to me compared to her other incarnations. I'll also be going on a little tangent about gatekeeping. When it comes to Zelda's depiction throughout the franchise, she follows a sort of pattern. So regardless of the art style or what role she's playing, she's still recognizable as herself. As a base, we're always working with a pale-skinned, long-haired elf lady. Typically, she has a floor-length dress, her overall silhouette kept very slim, which gives her an air of refined elegance. Rather than a crown or tiara that sits atop her head, she has a circlet. Circlets are generally more heavily associated with fantasy, specifically elven aesthetics, that alone could explain the choice of accessory, but I also believe it highlights Zelda representing wisdom. Her circlet decorates her forehead, where her brain is. As for her appearance in Twilight Princess, she does break a few rules. In every one of her iterations, Zelda has blonde hair and a pink dress, which makes her appear cute and bubbly. Twilight Princess has an overall darker aesthetic and grim tone, reflected in Zelda having brown hair and a purple part to her dress, making her appear much colder and regal. That cold disposition is really reinforced by the fact that she doesn't really smile. Overall, she's a very elegant, distant princess which contrasts heavily with her boots. You don't really get to see them until, spoiler I guess, you fight her. This design choice brings her down to earth, showing that she cares very little for the glamour of being a princess, and alludes to the fact that behind the title is a pragmatist. That's what the contrast tells me, and I'm inclined to believe that it's deliberate, because you never get to see that detail until she's levitating, so she didn't need to have practical boots. This singular detail had me so insanely obsessed at age 10 that I still think about it to this day. Twilight Princess Zelda isn't revolutionary. She's still a damsel in distress, spending most of her in-game time sitting helpless in a tower. So really, a conventionally pretty princess design is a perfectly good way to depict her. That said, she's not completely devoid of agency. She gives Link guidance, heals Midna, and once you free her from being puppeteered, shoots Ganondorf from horseback with a bow and arrow. Not yet the protagonist of her own franchise, but it's pretty neat, especially considering she is rarely allowed to do anything as herself. I'm referring to Sheik, Tetra, and that time she was more often than not a suit of armor and spirit tracks. Bringing it back to my favorite detail about her, the boots, they offer her that bit of depth, a small hint at her drive. Honestly, if she were allowed to, she probably would have gone out and saved Hyrule herself. When I saw the prompt for the collaboration project, Twilight Princess Zelda was the very first character to come to mind. That said, I waited a really long time to actually commit to that choice, not that there were any other contenders. Throughout my life, I've seen plenty of character designs that make me feel something, good and bad, but Twilight Princess Zelda was very special to me. She was the one that sparked my interest in character design, my hobby and lifelong obsession. The reason why I almost skipped out on an opportunity to speak my mind on something so dear to me to a larger audience was because I never played the game. I found Zelda by playing Super Smash Bros. Brawl when I was a kid. I played for fun because it was something to do with my dad. I was in no way good at it. I did try to get into Zelda games later on, but that didn't really pan out. I couldn't finish Skyward Sword because it was difficult. It took me a year to finish Breath of the Wild because I was afraid of fighting the final boss of the game. If I had the chance to pick up Twilight Princess right now, I probably wouldn't. So it really had me wondering, am I allowed to like this character from media I don't engage with? Do I have anything of value to say? if I'm not a quote-unquote real gamer? The answer is yes, evidently. I luckily managed to land on that conclusion just in time to apply for the collaboration and get accepted. So it really got me examining how people gatekeep the media they consume, specifically gamers in this context. With the internet, we don't need to play a game to experience it. It may be a shame not to play a game for yourself, but what's worse is preventing yourself from resonating with a creative project. Not having the time, money, or gaming skills shouldn't prevent you from enjoying the style, themes, characters, or story presented by a game. The people who exclude non-gamers might not 
not even care about those things, which isn't necessarily a bad thing. It just goes to show how different engagement can look from person to person. It's not fair to say there is a correct or more valid way to engage with a piece of media. I am not exaggerating when I say Twilight Princess Zelda changed my life. Is that suddenly not true just because I couldn't play the game itself? Anyway, regardless of what you think about the way we consume media or the Zelda franchise, I hope you enjoyed hearing me share why exactly Princess Zelda from Twilight Princess is my all-time favorite character design. I have other videos on character design and storytelling, albeit not many, so consider checking out my channel if you want to hear more from me. If you don't care about that but like my art, you can check out my Instagram, Tumblr, and Twitter. Also, maybe commission me. Please, thank you.